Today is Tuesday, August 6th. We have updates today about the two mass shootings from new information to new reaction to how you can help. Plus, we're talking about Juul's new high-tech e-cigarette, how Google plans to go green, and another live-action Little Mermaid. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. All right, let's start with updates about the mass shootings in Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas. First, the death toll has gone up. As of early this morning, 31 people now are dead between the two shootings that were less than 13 hours apart over the weekend. The latest two victims were in El Paso. They both died at the hospital. President Trump talked yesterday about the shootings, calling them crimes against all humanity. He asked the country to condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy, and said there needs to be a better way to fight extremism. He also said the U.S. glorifies violence, including video games. The AP reports he called for strong background checks for anyone trying to buy a gun, but also said, quote, mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. But The Hill reports the country's largest organization of psychiatrists pushed back, saying most people with mental illness are not violent, and linking the two adds to the stigma. And Democrats are not happy with the president's response either. The Washington Post reports they say he did not propose any solid plan to stop mass shootings. And some point to Trump's own rhetoric and tweets on immigration over the last two and a half years, saying his words are partly to blame, at least for the mass shooting in El Paso. Remember, that suspect is linked to a manifesto posted before the shooting that talks about a, quote, Hispanic invasion. And now ABC News reports the suspected shooter cased the store before he went inside, apparently trying to find Mexicans to kill. And of the 22 people killed that day, at least eight were Mexican nationals. Mexico now says this was an act of terror against its citizens as well, and so Mexican officials will be taking part in the investigation. Also of note, that manifesto the suspect allegedly wrote before the shooting was posted to an online message board called 8chan. The site has apparently turned into a hotspot for white supremacists and other racist groups, and now even the site's original founder wants it taken down, telling the current owner to, quote, do the world a favor and shut it off. Well, two companies that provide necessary tech services to the site cut off those services yesterday, effectively taking 8chan offline, at least for now. As for the Dayton, Ohio shooting, police are still working to figure out that gunman's motive. But as former classmates say, he had a hit list in high school years ago. CNN reports the shooter appears to have an extreme left-wing Twitter feed, although right now it's not clear if or how that might connect to what he did. And now to the victims in both of these shootings. We're learning a bit more about them. They range from 15 to 86 years old. CBS News says there will be vigils and community events throughout the week to remember the many lives lost. And charities like the Red Cross are accepting donations. If you're interested, we've posted a link in today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com with a list of charities and legitimate GoFundMe pages. Wall Street saw its worst day of the year this week, likely because of the trade war between the U.S. and China. The Wall Street Journal reports the Dow, S&P 500, and the Nasdaq all fell about 3% yesterday. That's the worst percentage drop for all three so far this year. The drop started last week when President Trump said he would put tariffs on more Chinese goods coming into the U.S. Remember that? Well, then it got worse yesterday when China let its currency drop to its lowest level against the dollar in more than a decade. The New York Times reports a weaker currency can make goods cheaper to sell abroad, meaning the taxes Trump has put on Chinese products won't hit China quite as hard. Well, Trump is not happy. CNBC reports the U.S. Treasury Department has labeled China a currency manipulator, a move that the White House hasn't used for years. And Trump could be planning further retaliation on top of the tariffs set to take effect September 1st. Stay tuned. Millions of people in Kashmir, a region that borders Pakistan and India, are essentially on lockdown as the area prepares for possible riots and protests this week. The BBC reports tens of thousands of Indian troops have been sent to the region. The government even shut off internet connection and phone lines so the people there don't get updates about what's really happening. Here's why. Kashmir is a small territory that both India and Pakistan claim is theirs. Vox says it's one of the most disputed places on Earth. And it's a dangerous one, since both countries have nukes. Despite that, Kashmir has been pretty independent governing itself. It even has its own constitution and flag. But now, things seem to be changing. Leaders in India decided to scrap laws that allow it to operate independently and will start taking more control over the area. 
So the thousands of extra troops are meant to prep for expected backlash and protest to this move. Critics call it unconstitutional, but even the experts are divided. To be continued. It's official now. July 2019 was Earth's hottest month on record. Before this, July 2016 held the record. But the Weather Channel reports this July was about 0.07 degrees warmer. It's important to note the record was set in 2016, right when the world was hit by one of the strongest El Nino events ever recorded. El Nino warms the Pacific Ocean, which leads to a rise in temps. Well, this July, we had a very weak El Nino event, which experts say makes the uptick in temps pretty alarming. It comes as parts of the world saw extreme heat in July. CNN reports at least a dozen countries broke heat records in Europe. And it's not over. Scientists say expect more extreme heat waves, and many experts blame climate change. Well, Google is going green. It made a new promise to cut back its carbon footprint. How? Google says it'll start using more recycled materials for its tech. The Verge reports by 2022, Google plans to have all of its made-by-Google hardware include recycled materials. So things like Pixel smartphones, Google Home smart speakers, and Nest thermostats will have some sort of recycled material in them. And by next year, Google says 100% of its shipments going to or from customers will be carbon neutral. By the way, if you want to take part, Google has a recycling program in the U.S. where you can request a shipping label to send back Google devices that you no longer need. More news ahead, but first let's take a quick break for today's sponsor, M.M. Lafleur. If you're like me and you don't always have the time to shop, but you still want quality professional clothing, then M.M. Lafleur is for you. Their pieces are designed to make your life easier. So we're talking machine washable, wrinkle resistant, and travel friendly. Meant to be worn from the office to happy hour or wherever you go in your day. All you do is take a short survey to tell them about your size and style preferences, and their expert stylist will send a collection of outfits tailored to your life. Or email them to talk through their collections and work with one of their stylists. And right now, new customers can even enjoy $25 toward their first purchase or bento box of clothes with the code NEWSWORTHY. Or just visit mmlafleur.com slash newsworthy to get more details and redeem that $25 gift. You can find the link mmlafleur.com slash newsworthy in today's show notes. And from there, you can get $25 toward your first purchase. Now, back to the news. Juul is rolling out a new smart e-cigarette that tracks how often its owner is puffing on it and can actually lock if it gets lost. That's meant to keep it out of kids' hands. Engadget says it pairs with an Android app to make this all possible. Juul is taking new steps because of government scrutiny. Remember, the FDA has said the number of teens using e-cigarettes has become an epidemic, and federal officials crack down on how Juul is allowed to market its products. So, with this new e-cig, the BBC reports, users will have to prove they're at least 18 with things like age verification and face recognition. The C1 is only available in the UK right now, but Juul is planning to roll it out internationally, so it could be in the US soon. It's kind of like Amazon Prime, but for a pharmacy. CVS is now offering a subscription program to get free delivery on drugstore products like shampoo and cold medicine, plus free delivery for prescriptions. It's called CarePass, and CNBC reports users will pay about 50 bucks a year. CVS has been testing this program in a few cities and found it's a good way to get more millennials as customers, so it's now going nationwide. More e-scooters are coming, this time from the car maker Audi. It's called the e-tron scooter, and Forbes reports it's basically an electric scooter that you ride like a skateboard. So rather than riding it facing forward like a regular scooter, you stand sideways and hold onto the front handlebar with one hand. The e-tron scooter will likely come out next year. It is set to cost about $2,000 to buy, but Audi may be rolling this out as a shared transportation option like we see with many of the others. The Little Mermaid is coming to life on the small screen. Deadline says the TV version will air on ABC in November and be reimagined for a live studio audience. Moana star Ali'i Gravalo will play Ariel, Queen Latifah is Ursula, and Shaggy will play Sebastian. To be clear, this live TV concert version in November is different from the live-action movie Disney is also working on with other people as the stars in Little Mermaid. That one won't come out for a while because production is only set to start next year. 
And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed or hit that follow button in your podcast app, be sure to do so. It's free and it helps make sure you get new episodes each weekday. As always, you can read more about any of the news stories we talked about in this episode. Just look for the links and sources in the episode description in your podcast app or click episodes on thenewsworthy.com. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by four in the morning. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day.